Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Green, I want to return to an exchange you had with Senator Sullivan. Um, I think you're speaking about the, the escalation ladder and where there might be a way to uh, step off the escalation ladder if North Korea engaged in a provocation that warranted a military strike against North Korea by the United States. My understanding of, of your position is that in, in part due to the, the, the size of their unconventional weapon systems on the DMZ and the number of those systems that can range so that it, it, there's not a lot of easy off-ramps on the escalation ladder. Is that right? <clears throat> Thank you, Senator. I'm glad you did return to the um, question raised by Senator Sullivan because I, I think I need to add more clarity. Um, in a scenario where there is actionable intelligence that North Korea is going to proliferate, I think there's a legal and a strategic case for preemption against a facility, even in North Korea, or in retaliation for um, you know, known proliferation. I think there is uh, arguably a case, harder case, but arguably a case under international law and strategically for using military force. I think the legal case is uh, flimsier and the strategic case is weaker if you're talking about using military force to stop their program. Um, so the reason uh, it's worth taking the risk to retaliate, it, as Admiral Baer was describing it, in my view, is because if we don't, the North Koreans will continue uh, increasing the level of the threat, then our options are getting worse and worse. Um, and that's why I said earlier in my testimony, this new containment strategy will involve a higher level of risk for us, but it's to prevent us having to ha take even riskier choices down the road. But not for preventive war. I think that's a much harder case. So in, in, if you had to take that step, given their nuclear weapons program, given their indirect fire systems on the DMZ, it, it's unclear how Kim Jong-un would assess those strikes versus, say, what Ronald Reagan did in Libya in 1986, what Bill Clinton did in Iraq in 1998, that had very, very clear and limited objectives that Muammar Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein did not see as regime decapitating strikes. Is that right? That's right. So my understanding is that after the 2010 attacks by North Korea against South Korea, um, uh, the ROK and the U.S. Um, uh, agreed on new guidelines, on new planning parameters for counter-provocation that would involve uh, moving up one echelon. They hit us with a battery. We hit the headquarters and the brigade. <clears throat> um, the North Koreans backed off because they knew it was a limited context, and it was not a uh, preamble to uh, invasion or regime change. And that is easier, uh, not easy, but easier uh, to manage in terms of escalation. And that what, what might be intended as a limited or retaliatory strike might be perceived as an effort to go for the jugular? Uh, I think if our rules of engagement, the North Koreans know these rules of engagement, they backed off. I think if our rules of engagement are, are understood, then we face less of a risk of escalation. There are scenarios where um, the U.S. and our allies would have no choice but to go to that uh, you know, uh, complete uh, regime change scenario, depending on what we are managing with uh, at the time. Right now, I don't see uh, that warranted in terms of the enormous risk we've described. Okay. Admiral Blair, uh, given that context that has prevailed in the Korean Peninsula for some time, um, and you know, the motto of U.S. Forces Korea, ready to fight tonight, um, we have about 250,000 American citizens on the Korean Peninsula. A lot of those are private citizens, Many of them are military personnel, but many of them are dependents, husbands and wives and kids of those military personnel, plus their diplomatic personnel. Would it be prudent, given the heightened tensions, to begin to consider stopping the deployment of dependents of U.S. Citizen, U.S. government um, officials and military personnel on the Korean Peninsula? Stopping that right now in view of the current level of tensions, are you asking, Senator? Yes. So obviously it would be a huge uh, um, evacuation effort to get all of the dependence down of Korea, even if you want to do that today, but would it be prudent to say to service members, you know, starting in 30 days, Korea will once again be an unaccompanied tour, not an accompanied tour. So we don't continue adding to the, to the risk that we're posing to our families and also uh, the leverage that we might be giving to the Kim regime. I, I would not favor that uh, under the current circumstances uh, right now, uh, Senator. It sort of ties in with this discussion of imminent threat that we've been having uh, uh, Earlier in this uh, in this hearing, we've we've had uh, both uh, uh, military <clears throat> members and their families there for a long time. Uh, we have a, a a war plan which we have confidence in. We have nuclear deterrence which we have 
uh, confidence in. We think we can. Uh, we think we can handle it. If the circumstances change radically, then as you know, uh, evacuating all of our citizens is a is a part of uh, our preparations to do that. But I don't think we've uh, crossed that uh, crossed that trigger yet. Okay. Thank you. My time has expired.